In an effort to attract more workers, some companies have begun offering assistance with college tuition. Starting August 16th, Walmart will provide free college tuition and books to its nearly 1.5 million employees. And Target will pay for its employees' tuition and books at 40 schools and universities across the country. They'll also contribute $10,000 a year for a master's program. Team Rising is here to weigh in. We're joined now by senior editor at Reason.com, Robbie Suave. Welcome, Robbie. Thanks for having me. Robbie, what, what do you make of this uh, latest move by Walmart and Target? Well, I mean, I, I think obviously it's a good thing. Uh, probably there are ways to be cynical about it, uh, but it's, I mean, it's a good thing for workers, right, who are at those companies and want to get a college education. Um, the model of, you know, the student taking out massive loan debt to pay these costs and then, you know, being really in, in huge trouble if or when they get their degree and they have to pay back all this money and they don't they didn't even really know what they were getting into. Um, this model has been ruinous. So a model where someone else, not the government, but like a private employer uh, pays for your school costs is certainly a better one. And if they're doing this, you know, voluntarily out of their own uh, effort to recruit uh, outstanding talent, I mean, I this is kind of a win-win, right? Why wouldn't we say, sure, that sounds good? Except don't you think this should be the job of the government? I mean, I, I know you, Robbie, being a libertarian, definitely don't think <laughs> that. But, uh, you know, but listen, this is just one more incentive that these companies are picking up. You know, to me, it's just the oddest thing that we saddle businesses with the the burden of, uh, of making sure that their employees have health insurance. To me, that is something that should be the job of the government. And the same thing with ensuring that we have an educated populace. That is something that should be the job of the government. Um, and if you want to be the type that says, well, the government is just for defense, I would argue that, you know, health and education are part of national defense in a way, right? We have to have a healthy population in order to compete and uh, and defend ourselves against other countries. I mean, this is just something that if an, if an employee is given health insurance and now they're given education, and look, you know, in the meantime, because the government's not offering this, I think it's great that these people are able to get it somewhere. But, you know, if they're if they're offering these services, then what happens is these employees can never really leave these jobs. They essentially are enslaved by these companies. They don't have any autonomy or freedom to walk away because, oh no, if I leave, I'm not gonna have health insurance, which is already a worry for millions of Americans. And then you add on top of that a layer of, and then I'll lose my college tuition. I just, you know, again, it's good. People are getting their, their education paid for, but this is something I'd prefer to see the government picking up. Well, let's be clear. These are two of the biggest corporations on the planet. So um, Target, Walmart, it is certainly built into their bottom line that they can afford to do this. And I think a private company has more of an incentive to invest in its workers and in their futures and in keeping them around um, than the government does. And I would have to guess that they're going to do it more effectively to try to retain that talent. So I'm with Robbie. I see it as a total win-win if you can afford it, by all means. Um, you know, the government certainly cannot be affording to give free college tuition to the entire country, but big, massive corporations that are able to, they should certainly step into the void. Well, maybe if yeah. we stop giving Walmart all of the breaks that we give them, we could afford to actually give money to our population, give education to our population rather than breaks to big corporations. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, an issue, I see what you're saying, Kim. But I mean, the reality is that, you know, the government's effort to help people pay for college has coincided with like a massive increase in the underlying cost of college. Um, I think we probably would all agree right from libertarian to far left that the current system makes no sense where like the government helps, uh, you know, subsidizes the price of your loans. So you're not paying anything on uh, up front. But then the college can just charge whatever they want because you don't even know what it costs because the government is paying for it for you now. But then later you're going to pay it back. And then when you realize what it actually costs, you're screwed. So this is like the worst of all possible systems. And I think anything would be better than this. Uh, but I, you know, I, I, I worry that it, so even if we accept that, you know, it's the government's job to help people pr pay for their education or to get an education or provide some kind of education. The reality is that government involvement in this sector, just like government involvement in the health sector, which is also has many of these same problems, do has tended to, you know, vastly increase the price in a very concerning and inefficient way. So I guess that would be the argument for just letting Walmart do it, even though it's not ideal.
Yeah, I, I, I certainly sympathize with that, Robbie, that, that the current system is, is unsustainable and, and ridiculous and that uh, and a lot of the federal subsidies have, have driven kind of out of control uh, costs at, at colleges. I'm, I'm curious, uh, from your perspective as, as a libertarian, there's, there, there's all, I often see so much focus on you know, maximizing individual freedom relative to the government, but not so much relative to, to corporate power. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I'm curious wh wh why that is. Uh, I mean, the idea of corporate power, I mean, I think I take you know, corporate power somewhat um, seriously. Yeah, I, I've criticized, I mean, I criticize a lot of private companies, a lot of companies in the tech sector for doing things that, you know, impinge on people's freedoms or uh, harm people's freedoms. It's not the same thing because you don't have the same, you know, guarantee of constitutional protections from some of the things they do. So I might say, well, they, I think they're allowed to do it. I just don't like it is kind of the argument I more often make with the corporations. And I guess one other thing I would say with this specifically, you know, if, if I'm trying to come up with concerns I have, um, you know, not all workers might actually want or feel that, the, that they have a need to get a college education. And I wonder if there will be like pressure to do that because that's the thing you're supposed to do if you're working for these companies. And I actually think that trend has probably been negative. The trend to absolutely every person in society needs to have a college education if they want to be a productive worker. Uh, I actually think that's sort of a perverse <laughs> notion that was was bad to push on people uh, because not everyone enjoys school. Not everyone is getting something out of it. And the idea that just literally everyone on the planet is going to be improved by spending four years and, and a certain amount of you know, investment in their time, and that's going to make them better. Some people might not want that, and they shouldn't be, we, we shouldn't reorient society to force everyone into it. Although I will point out that was the same argument made many years ago before uh, pre, you know, before kindergarten through 12th grade, people would say, oh, I don't, my, we don't need education for those seventh graders to continue on into the eighth or ninth <laughs> grade or 10th grade or 12. I mean, education is just so fundamentally important. And, and an educated population is something that, you know, that that especially when other countries around the world are educating their populations. And then if we just end up left behind, we're going to be left behind in a lot more ways than just whether or not we can do some math problems. Uh, but you, but, practic you, know, you I practically need a master's degree to be a barista at Starbucks because our workforce is so overeducated and employers can pick you know, the people with the most, with, with the highest level of degree, even though you don't actually need the degree to do that job, because there's such a glut of, of over or over-credentialed, maybe not even over-educated, but over-credentialed people, because we've pushed on everyone this system where we have to jump through four hoops, five hoops, no, nine hoops before you, you can be counted as a productive member of society. And it's, the cost is astronomical, and I think it's not wise. I think it was but not again, a good But that was the system. argument back in the day when they'd say, oh, no, you know, now you need more than an eighth grade education in order to well, work at a store. And, you know, it's like now that's pretty normal. You do need more than an eighth grade education in order to have most jobs in the country. So, I mean, you know, the bar, yes, it keeps it keeps raising. That is because we keep learning more. We, we are gaining more education. We're becoming smarter as a global population, not just as a U.S. population. But I understand, you know, it does seem at times like certain jobs, maybe you don't need to have that level of an education. And certainly traditional education is not for everybody. So I agree with you on that. Well, fascinating conversation, Robbie. We always appreciate having you. More Rising next.